Those voters dismayed by the budget spendathon and perhaps wondering why they're still Liberals should come roaring back to the coalition after Labor's address in reply last night. At least that's what many in the government today are hoping because the Labor leader's speech last night confirmed that however much debt and deficit the coalition racks up, Labor will do more and be worse. Today claims that parts of the opposition leader's speech contained plagiarised language and themes, well, those claims were everywhere. Lines are stolen from the great orator and conservative Ronald Reagan, plus ideas lifted from the hard-left zealot Jeremy Corbyn, all thrown together in a bid to get Labor over the line at a federal poll due any time between now and the next 12-month period. Of course, Albanese is no stranger to ripping off someone else's work, even dipping as low as to steal lines from a cheesy Hollywood movie about a US president. And we need serious people to solve them. Unfortunately, Tony Abbott is not the least bit interested in fixing anything. He's only interested in two things, making Australians afraid of it and telling them who's to blame for it. We have serious problems to solve and we need serious people to solve them. And whatever your particular problem is, I promise you, Bob Rumson is not the least bit interested in solving it. He is interested in two things, and two things only, making you afraid of it and telling you who's to blame for it. Now, the centrepiece of Labor, Labor's budget reply pitch last night was a $10 billion scheme to build 30,000 affordable houses for domestic violence victims, older women, veterans, and those he called the heroes of the pandemic. Nurses, police, frontline workers, even hospital cleaners. Now, almost nothing could better show Labor's addiction to big spending, big government, its disdain for proper process, its scorn for the normal operation of a market economy, and its double standards and hypocrisy than this thought bubble. Just do the numbers. 10 billion divided by 30,000, and ask yourself, as sympathetic as you might be to people doing it tough who might need a home, why should a chosen 30,000 Australians get a free gift from the taxpayer, averaging about $330,000 each? There's a right to shelter in this country, but there's no right yet, nor should there be, for taxpayers to buy you or anyone a home. As we know, it's tough to own a home with wages flat and house prices soaring. Why should some be singled out for this taxpayer gift, but not others? Rent assistance for those who need it is one thing. This is a brand new home. You, the taxpayer, are going to spend $300 odd thousand dollars to buy for a handful of chosen Australians. Why not make housing easier for everyone? By giving back taxpayers this $10 billion that Labor's pulled together, give it back to them in the form of tax cuts for low and middle income households, letting people keep more of their own money to choose the house they want to buy in the suburb they want to live to raise their family. That's the Australian way. Rather than being forced onto a housing estate or into a block of commission flats to yet again just grow the role of the state in our day-to-day -day lives. And it didn't pass me by either, of course, that this is the same Labor Party that at the last federal election was threatening to rip off the negative gearing that helps to make rental housing affordable and available and is so often used by teachers, nurses, police, those frontline heroes, to help them afford an investment property. Indeed, statistics show that almost 70% of Australians who negatively gear their investment properties earn average earnings. Exactly the sort of people Albo was trying to appeal to last night. And this specific mention of cleaners. We will build 10,000 affordable housing properties for frontline workers, the heroes of the pandemic, those nurses, police, emergency service workers and cleaners that are keeping us safe. Now, I haven't forgotten here either that this is the same Labor Party that only a couple of terms back, was desperate to defend Craig Thompson, the former health service union official turned MP, who had been ripping off funds from these same hospital workers, hospital cleaners, and heading off to the brothels. When Albanese was on Labor's front bench then, 
and so desperate were they to hold on to power in the hung parliament, they turned a blind eye to Thompson's behaviour in order to keep his vote. But back to Labor's new plan for a taxpayer-funded housing lottery. There are good arguments that by subsidising some home buyers but not others, this will just drive up the price of housing while giving some people an unfair advantage to enter the market. And honestly, with the millions who've worked on the front line of the health pandemic, how on earth would you use the winners and the losers? This is the sort of policy madness where things are just not thought through that we saw when Labor was in government last time. Cash for clunkers, petrol watch, grocery watch, roof bat scandal, overpriced school halls. You've heard it all. You remember it all. That's what's on the table from last night. Coming out of Budget Week, we've got a big spending Liberal Party, and sure, I'm not fa any fan of that. But worse, we've got an even, even bigger spending Labor Party. And what should worry you is, as you look at the electoral boundary changes, the number of retirements in the coalition and the underlying poll trends, it's not impossible for the Prime Minister to win the next election. Right now, this is a Labor election to lose. For me, the most disappointing aspect of all of this has been Canberra's readiness to treat a mere drop in the quantum of borrowing as if it was some kind of saving that they could then spend on something else. And this continued nonsense that somehow cheap money's free. Cheap money's not free. It's never been free, it'll never be free. Forget that, Australia, at your peril.